our electricity bills are set to skyrocket. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm working through my morning stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from news.com.au because it's discussing our electrical bills, you know, set to double as a result of the pandemic. And I thought that was, that was interesting. That was interesting, particularly because I just received a bill update in the mail. And you can see it here. This is a change to my electricity costs. Their electricity costs. They're going down, everyone. They're going down. Now, for those of you overseas, you'll probably be a bit shocked at how high electricity electricity is in Australia. It's bloody expensive per kilowatt hour, cents per kilowatt hour. So right now, including GST, for the first 379 kilowatt hours, I'm paying 25.663 cents. Thereafter, I'm paying 25.663 cents, and I've got a service charge of a dollar and six cents per day. Okay, a dollar and six cents per day. You know, GST guys, it's increasing the cost of living right there, right there. Now I have a new rate. It's going down, going down to 25.4 wow, cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, whoop de doo. So my, I mean, hey. It's free money. I might, I may need to ring up and see if they can get me a better deal or shop around a little bit. We tend to use a fair bit of power here because we work from home. So I've got, you know, the computers in front of me. I've got the servers running. I've got other equipment. So one of the smarter things we did from moving our business home, to be quite honest, is just consolidating our power usage. So I don't have two premises running. I don't have two fridges running. You know, all the office setup, the office equipment, the office servers. When I just got it here. And, you know, I'll track the power that goes to the office compared to the rest of the house. It's a business expense. So that was a, a saving. I'd, we don't have solar, but, I'd, you know, once we do the renovations, it would be worth getting because we use so much power here during the day. I don't think I'd bother with batteries but just to offset our daily costs. So let's have a look at this article because I'm thinking, why are they skyrocketing when I'm getting a discount? Are you getting a discount as well on your power bill? You know, let me know, guys. Let me know. But that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. Energy usage across the country has increased by 105% since the start of the pandemic, with some households facing thousands of dollars in bills. And here's how you can reduce your energy consumption. Well, I'm turning into my father. I'm turning into my parents. I'm now going around the house and getting the kid and telling the kids, turn off the light, turn off the light if you're not in that room. It's a scary thing when you suddenly hear your parents your parents' voice emerge from yourself, you know. And let's have a look. Before we go through this, we'll jump over here to the Australian energy market, and we can see just along the east coast at least what energy or how our energy is produced and at what efficiencies they're going or utilization rates they're going. You can see here the wind down in Victoria, and it's good to actually see some of it producing over 60%, which is fantastic. So they must have, they must have, a fair bit of wind and we'll just bring this up at the moment wind finder yeah there you go you can see here the wind speed in knots around victoria at the moment is high they've invested quite heavily in wind power because well they can take, make use of it they can make use of it but it's it's sad when you see how many of them are like at zero percent often you know at zero percent you can see here the coal plants are going crazy these ones here these are you'll find they'll have gas plants and though they kick in at peak loads because they can turn them on and off they're pretty much a, you know like a gas a plane gas turbine it's amazing amazing and this is good just to get an understanding of current energy usage and how it's produced i mean there you go good old uh, black coal is still right at the top and then brown so yeah yep just keep that in mind where our energy is coming from the power is quite a convoluted market. It is a lot of regulation, a lot of intervention, a lot of uh, complexity and supply issues. It, it is not simple by any measure. So I can understand why people want to get off the grid, to be quite honest. So thousands of Australians will face eye-watering energy bills this winter as a result of the pandemic. Since the start of the pandemic, energy use across the country has increased by 105%, according to data from National Solar. Australia's largest in solar of solar panels and batteries. Okay, so here's the question. Is this a paid article? 
is this a paid article? You know, a national solar, you know, they've got a paid link. They've got a link here. Did they put this together to for news.com, for the Courier Mail? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Average daily consumption has skyrocketed to 33.9 kilowatt hours compared with 16.5 kilowatt hours at the same time last year. And our power usage has gone up. Our, well, not really, to be honest. Uh, it's gone up since we moved the office home. We've now got Rachel's sister living here, so that's an increase to our power usage as well. Uh, Rachel's father, you know, he's in the caravan at the back. He's drawing a fair bit of power with all his gadgets. But still... As a result, household energy bills for the past quarter could more than double with the average household paying $800 up from 406 Those households with higher than average power usage can expect bills of up to $1,800 a quarter. Wow, lucky, lucky this solar company just ha happens to have a link in this article that you can click on, everyone. That you can click on. Well, my power bill's going down. Uh, there you go. If you want to save money on power, just... Stop using things. You know, turn off the heater. Get a blanket. Put a beanie on your head when you're cold. Turn off the air conditioning. You know, just put up with it. Go out in the sun. Turn off the lights. National Solar Chief Executive Chris Williams said during the pandemic, Australians got a taste for what it was like to work and study from home, which had created a generational shift in where, how, and why we use electricity. Really? We envisage the trend for higher usage is going to continue. And while it may be at a lesser rate than during the pandemic, even a 30 or 40% rise will have a significant impact on household bills, he said. While the majority of Australian families will be hit hard by the increases, he said, there were pockets of homeowners set to make it through the quarter unscathed. Homeowners using solar power combined with batteries to store unused power, have less reliance on the grid and a greater chance of reducing or eliminating their electricity bills. Yes, if you spend 15 grand getting a huge battery installed and you've got a solar system that you need to maintain. I, I've got no problem with solar. What annoys me with solar is that the government is subsidizing it for people that don't need to get subsidies. I've sat around a room with a bunch of rich people, wealthy people who had all gotten the subsidy. Subsidies add up to more than a pension for someone for a year. It just seems ludicrous. Then you get the mess in Victoria where they step in and they cap the number of subsidies that you can get. And the problem is the subsidies are so high, it's 50% off a solar system. So in Victoria, right now, the government, by helping everyone and by stepping and manipulating the market, has limited the number of jobs that businesses can do. Because you would be crazy if you miss out on one month and don't get your solar subsidy, you're going to wait for another month because you want that 50% discount. It is utterly insane. And it's a perfect example of how the government meddling in things, trying to do good, winning votes, getting those Greens preferences for Labour, and how it backfires and destroys an industry. And I mean, the solar people were probably lining up for it, going, yes, yes, vote for them, vote for them. And they didn't realize they were making a deal with the devil and they've destroyed this sector in there or significantly limited it. That's the problem. And let's not even get into all the conflict minerals and just the lifespan of these batteries. Now you've got to recycle them. and That's a complete other topic. For Clint and Christina Luna, who own a four-bedroom family home and have three children aged six, four, and two, installing solar panels and a battery has allowed them not only to eliminate their energy bills, but to earn money back really feels like an article. Are we going to see pictures of them or are they not even real? Mr. Luna, who has two electric cars, said that with the cost of solar and battery power, power falling over the years, he realized that upgrading to a 40 kilowatt solar system would allow him to run his house and his two cars at minimal to no cost. Well, no, you're just paying that cost up front, mate. 40, 40 kilowatt system and batteries. And there's only so much you can get there's only so much you can sell back to the grid. I mean, there you go. I mean, he's got he's got two Teslas, so he's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of money. He doesn't care. Let's let's hope it's not all on. Let's hope it's not all on a uh, on mortgages, guys. Is he on mortgage holiday? Is he on JobKeeper? Let's ask those questions. 
My post-pandemic energy bill was $200 in credit, so I actually made money back, he said. Solar is a bit of a no-brainer. It will give you payback in about three to four years. Well, it depends on what the energy costs are. And if the government stops, stops um, subsidizing it, that's the problem. I'd rather, rather just leave the market alone. The government gets out of it and not putting it on people's houses. Come on. Seriously. Someone has two Teslas. Do they need a subsidy for their solar panels? No, they don't. And, I mean, my neighbor next door. He went and bought a new car. He got, what was it? It was a pluggable hybrid. Pluggable hybrid. So he's got 50 kilometers battery range. And he just plugs it in, charges it at home. No problem. Seemed like a great idea. We've got a hybrid. We've got the little hybrid a Toyota Camry that we've been running well. It's got about the same fuel efficiency as her Smart for Two. But not as embarrassing when you go inside. I got rid of that when we had kids. Now I drive a Kia as well, guys. <laughs> with five children in the back. Oh boy, what, what have I become? Mr. Luna, who runs an international business from his home office, said having alternative energy sources had other benefits beyond monetary savings, including the security of uninterrupted power. Okay, um, I have that too. I have a USB right here that I can use. You know, that cost me about a thousand bucks. And you're often, well, there have been some recordings I've done with no power, where the power's lot been lost. And I've just kept going, I've been able to record. Uh, the problem we have is just our wiring needs to be gutted and redone. I need to get a new switchboard. Still got the old ones, you know, the old ceramic with the wire. If the area has a blackout, for instance, we still have power. We can just carry on as normal, which is really important, especially in these times when more people are working from home and relying on having power no matter what. Anyone who has roof space and doesn't have solar is pretty crazy. You know, I mean, think about it. How much money are you going to chuck in there? How much money are you going to chuck in there? What, what are the opportunity costs of that investment? So you're front paying. You're hoping that power is going to keep getting more expensive. You're hoping that government's going to keep uh, subsidizing this industry. You're hoping that you have no maintenance issues. I don't have to worry about fluctuations in anything. Not power prices, not energy bills, nothing. Well, it's not going to last forever, mate. You know, probably got 20 years on it. And backup, I got a generator as well. With the increased frequency of natural design. Oh, come on. that That's not actually true, guys. Uh, Mr. Williams said... There has been a general shift in people wanting self-sufficiency when it comes to powering their home. Yes, perhaps, but not actually having their own cash. They just rob petrol stations when they need it. He said improvements in technology had made power sources such as solar and batteries more affordable, with households saving money almost immediately. They're not... They're putting in tens of thousands of dollars. Guys, there's a payback period. Sometimes it won't pay itself off if electricity keeps going down. Meanwhile, for those who have been affected by the pandemic, some energy companies are trying to help customers through a period of bill shock. Origin Senior Executive uh, External Affairs Manager Paul Dubedin said the energy company would be providing tailored support, including payment extensions, payment plans, or referrals for those customers affected by the pandemic. We have also paused all late payment fees and are not disconnecting or defaulting or default listing any customers in financial stress until at least the 31st of July. Oh, that's so nice. So here's 10 ways to reduce your energy bills. Let, let me know if you use these. Turn off appliances at the power point when they're not in use. Keep your air conditioner or heat, well, turn off appliances. No, I don't, I don't do that. I, I don't care. Keep your air conditioner or heating or, yeah, well, I don't even have an air conditioner, so don't need to worry about that. Turn off unnecessary lighting. Yep, done that. Use your clothes dry sparingly. It uses a lot of energy. Uh, I tried. I try to avoid that. I go both ways. Depends. It depends. It's been raining here. Be mindful of the energy star rating when buying appliances. Pay more attention to energy efficiency appliances. Uh, make you a significant gain over time. That depends on the lifespan of the product. That depends on the lifespan of the product. You can be paying a higher price for a lower energy star product or a cheaper price. Yeah, a higher price for a more energy efficient product. And when you look at the kilowatt cost, you know, I'm paying what, 25 cents a kilowatt. And you look at how long you have to use that machine and how the long the lifespan of that machine has to be. It may be better to buy a less efficient product and then put that money somewhere else. Just, just you know, you've got to do the actual sums. Only use washing machines when you have a full load. Well, that's no problem with us, with our household. 
consider portable solar in your out solar lighting in your outdoor areas. I mean, yeah, okay. Monitor your electricity usage. There are cost-effective tools that you can buy to show your consumption and shop around for the best energy deal. If you can afford it, invest in solar panels and a battery storage system. It could save you around $2,000 a year, but you've got to invest tens of thousands of dollars. So here we go. It was an advertisement. This entire article was a source from National Solar. I'm assuming, or maybe just these top 10 lists. What do you think, everyone? What do you think? Do you think it's a little deceptive? Feels like it, doesn't it? It feels like it. We're seeing more and more of this. More and more of this. You know, I mean, are you a fan of solar? Do you want the government to keep subsidizing it for people? Or would you rather see that money go somewhere else? Or maybe if you have two Teslas, you shouldn't be able to get it. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Are your power bills going down? What do you do to save? If you're a fan and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint. Or you can support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time.